Hello everyone. We've got a very wild windy day here. I think we're into winter time now, although it's very mild still. We're only 12 degrees here today, so it's not really cold. Um, a lot of the trees have lost their leaves and the garden is looking bedraggled. But unfortunately, my willow arch has been blown down. It's got too top heavy. Despite tying in all the willow this year, it's shooted up again and it's been too much for the wind. So I'm just going to start clipping this back and we'll just have to start from scratch. But that is okay. You know, nature is so um, self-rejuvenating. This will all come back for sure. No matter how much I cut it down, it's going to come back again. So I'm not worried at all. And all of this is going to be very useful for baskets or even as kindling. Now, see that would be handy for kindling. But um, it's that lovely time of year when we can finish our outdoor tasks and move inside to be more creative with all the harvest and the abundance that we've gathered through the year. So what I'm going to do today is I'm going to start getting into my groove of preparing for Christmas. So I'm going to be making some body care, some soap, some lotions and skin creams and things. And then next week, I'll be going on to um, formulating some winter remedies. Different tinctures can be formulated together to make a more powerful remedy. So that's what I'll be doing next week. But this week, I'm just going to finish this off and then come inside with me and we can start making, straining off some oils and making some soap and body lotions and skincare. nice to get into the warmth after being out in the blustery wild windy day so I've got some rose petals that have been infusing in oil since June they're just sitting here in the muslin and the oil is slowly dripping through so I've already um, strained out some calendula and some lavender and I have some rosemary to do as well so these oils and I have some others they're all the result of a beautiful harvest of lovely fragrant flowers that are all medicinal. So all of these can be taken internally, but when we infuse them in oil, we can use them externally on the skin. So I infuse calendula because it's, it's antibacterial, it's antifungal, it's antiseptic, and it makes a wonderful, it's so very soothing and softening for the skin. So it's really lovely for eczema, so you could make a salve or a balm. It's great for babies' bums. And I'm going to put it into some soap because then I get a really gentle soap that is really suitable for babies and for people with sensitive skin. You can use it as well if you're, you know, if you have animals and pets because it's it's going to prevent picking up things like roundworm, is it? Different skin complaints anyway. It'll just protect and soothe. And lavender is another antiseptic herb. It's also very, very relaxing for the nerves. So it's lovely in a soap because you're making a lovely soapy lather that goes over the body. Or I could use some of this in a, a body lotion as well. Because the infused oil is your base for whatever you're making for the body. So whether it's soap or body lotion, or in this case with the roses, it's going to be for skin, facial skin care because rose is so cooling and soothing and softening that it's very good for all skin types so um, any kind of skin type but especially gentle with 
for people with acne or acne rosacea. So I'm just going to take these clips off now and I'm going to give this muslin a little squeeze and get the last of the oil squeezed through. This is rose infused oil. This is going to go into facial creams and um, I'll be, use, I'll be mixing it up with um, rose water, aloe vera and other ingredients, shea butter for example, to create a lovely soothing nourishing moisturizer. I keep all the strange oils in my apothecary because an infused oil can be so versatile, you can do so much with it. Now I'm going to make a rose face cream with the rose oil and some cocoa butter. I'm just going to place this in a bain-marie and let it gently melt. All the recipe and the ingredients, everything will be down below the film. This is an incredibly easy recipe for anyone to follow. It's so simple, you can't go wrong. looks so luscious. It looks delicious. I mean you could eat it, everything here is edible. Unlike commercial creams that are full of chemicals and some of which are suspected carcinogens. And that's why I make my own soap. I like to know what I'm putting on my skin and in this way I can control everything and nothing can sneak past. And of course, making my own soap, I get to keep all the glycerin. Apparently there's over 50,000 chemicals in our environment today, most of which are have never been tested, most of which we don't know what they do to human beings and to other creatures. I'm adding some oats for gentle exfoliation. and of course the properties of the oats and I'm pouring it now into these molds. It looks like a thick, thick custard. All the recipe will be underneath the video so you can try making it yourself. Plus I have a previous video where I make soap one step at a time. And that's it. So it's, my soap has been um, processing for the last, well, just over 24 hours. So it's always exciting when we do the reveal to make sure it's actually turned out. And here it is. It's a lovely solid block of soap. And that one is too. So these are lavender with oats and they're gonna be very, very soothing, lovely bars of soap. They've got this greeny tinge because it was olive oil and the lavender water that I used and the lavender oil that I used don't really take on any colour so it's mainly the green of the olive oil that we can see here. So I'm just going to tear them out of the packet, the old milk carton and then I'll be chopping them up for them to harden because we can't use this straight away because it's still full of um, 
the lye is still active and it would be very irritating to the skin. So we chop it into the um, bars of soap and then we leave it to cure for six weeks. So this soap will be ready just in time for Christmas if I wanted to give it as gifts or if anybody wanted to buy it to give us gifts. So I take a little bit off this end where the um, the cap was on the carton and that's just a little bit to go aside and then I like to measure them so that they weigh about a hundred grams approximately a hundred grams. See it's lovely and soft to slice through now. There's a soap that I made some months ago and you can see the difference in colour. Once the, once the cake, once the soap is sliced into blocks of soap, I put it onto a cake cooling tray because that allows the air to get all around and cure the soap. So the process of saponization um, keeps working and then it eventually um, it stops. So the soap becomes lovely and soothing and softening for the skin and very, very gentle and it's nice and hard so that because it's a castile soap because it's made with olive oil if you don't harden it or cure it for long enough it can get very kind of um, slimy it kind of melts as you're using it so you want to be sure that it's really well hardened off and on a cooling tray like this the air gets all around and helps to dry it and to cure it so that will be ready in about six weeks, so just in time for Christmas, if you wanted to give somebody a, a gift of soap. So there you go. And when it's completely dry, it won't be as greeny yellow. It'll be more this colour. This is an old soap now. It's been cured for many months, if not longer. So you can see the difference. And that's it. Such a sense of satisfaction making something that you know is going to be purely of benefit to somebody. There are no, um, there's not going to be any dangers to using this soap. People with the most sensitive skin can use this soap. And the same with the face cream that I made. They're full of natural goodness. In fact, you could eat the face cream if you so wanted, <clears throat> because there's nothing in there that's going to harm you. So it's just a lovely way. It's that part of the cyclical um, aspect of the year that what we grow and harvest we can use in a lovely way like this. So I hope it's inspired you to think about making some of your own uh, skin care and body care and um, I'm going to go off now and think about what else I'm going to make. So I'll see you next week. Bye! I hope you enjoyed today's film. If you did, subscribe and hit the bell for notifications. And have a look at the website, danusirishherbgarden.com, for more information about us and about the herbal medicine courses I offer and the Wise Woman Way training. And if you go to the shop, you can find the books, the weed handbooks and other herbal goodies. And remember, we put a new film out every Sunday. So looking forward to seeing you next week.